Hi, I'm Paul Pasolka, Ivy Masters Learning Center and ivymasters.com. And today we're going to look at Test 1, Section 1, Number 31, which reads, Based on the table, is a percentage of adenine in each organism's DNA the same or does it vary? And which statement made by the authors is most consistent with the data? So, what you typically want to do first is look at the graph or the chart or the table because you know exactly where you're looking and then you could look at the answer choices with all the various lines. Now for this one in particular, it's going to be easy to tell just based on the table whether the percentage of each organism's adenine is the same and then we could eliminate two answer choices and then we could go to the passage to see which one's a better fit. So. Here we go. Up at the table, we're looking at adenine, which you can see is this column here, base composition of DNA, organisms down here, percentage of base and organisms DNA, and here you have your adenine. Make sure you understand what's going on with each table before you go to the answer choices. Biggest mistake students make is they look at the answer choices before they understand what's going on in the table, their graph, or the chart, whatever it may be. And you can see here that adenine in each organism is different. We've got a low of 24.7 with E. coli, and we've got a high of 33.2 with the octopus. They're all different. So we could eliminate two answer choices for number 31. Not the same, not the same. Let's go to the answer choices. It varies and why. Line 36 to 38. Let's see if that's valid. In line 36, we've got adenine, for example, can occur on either chain, but when it does, its partner on the other chain must always be thymine. So just because adenine has to be paired with thymine does not mean that it's going to vary from one organism to the next. So adenine is always paired with thymine. There could always be 25% of adenine and 25% thymine in each chain. We don't know. We Looks like that's not our answer there. So we're going to look at the other lines, which are 41 to 45. And looking at 41 to 45 starts down here. It follows that. So this is building on a previous argument, but I don't think, and it's always good to get context, but for the purpose of this, we don't really have to read that previous. Long molecule of many different permutations are possible, and it therefore seems likely that the precise sequence of bases in the is the code which carries the genetical information. So when you see the word permutations, don't let it freak you out. You might have done permutations and combinations in math class. It's the same idea. So permutations are like how, um, what proportion different things are combined in. And this is really your answer right here. It therefore seems likely that the precise sequence of these bases is the code which carries the genetical information. So if there's different permutations from one organism to another, and it's the sequence that carries the genetical information, that's what makes organisms different. Their genes look like, looks like our answer is D. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, click like. You could share it with someone who has trouble with the reading comprehension questions that are paired with the tables of the charts or the graphs. If there's any question you'd like to see answered from any official PSAT or SAT or ACT, leave that in the comments. I'd be happy to shoot a video on it. And click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Have a great day.